In this lecture, we are going to talk about methods for combining machine learning models. And the essential idea is to create better performing predictive systems by just combining individual models in a particular way. Now in the upcoming videos, I'll explain some of the most popular and effective methods for a model combination. Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about methods for uh, combining models. And this uh, basically covers the chapters 4.1 up to 4.4 of uh, the book of Bishop. And what I'm going to start off with is uh, placing a particular method for model combination, uh, which, we have, uh, which we have already seen, namely Bayesian model average, in the context of this more general approach to uh, model combination methods. And this more general approach uh, relies on the notion of committees, uh, committees of, of experts, of, of classifiers or predictive systems. Right, so I could have a committee or a set of classifiers and I'm going to combine them to come up with their final predictions. And there are several ways to come up with these uh, different models and ways of combining them. And we will cover them in, in the next video. So first we're going to cover bootstrap aggregation and random subspace methods. And then we talk about uh, boosting to obtain a particular a committee of experts or a committee of classifiers or regressors. And then finally, we cover a particular machine learning method, uh, namely decision trees, uh, which are extremely uh, powerful and also simple to use and simple to use in, in, in combination with these uh, combination methods. And then I'm going to show that if we uh, combine decision trees together with this approach for um, forming your committee, namely bootstrap aggregation and random subspace methods, we arrive at the notion of random forest, which is another very powerful machine learning method. Okay, now uh, so far we have considered many different models for classification and regression, right? And now it, it is often the case that the overall performance of your method uh, can be uh, improved simply by compi combining multiple models in, in a particular way. And that makes sense, right? Suppose you have one method that works well and you have another method that works also well, then maybe combining them leads to an even better system. And this is what you actually see if you look at the rankings of, the, of Kaggle, so all these uh, machine learning challenges, those are typically won, these challenges, they are typically won by uh, methods that apply some form of a combination of, of, uh, of expert systems. And we already saw an example of such a basic model combination method when we discussed the bias variance trade-off, right? So uh, basically the experiment was we we're, were training L different models, L different regression models, and then make a final prediction simply by taking the average of all these models. And that leads to a model which has a low bias and a low variance, simply by combining, uh, by averaging over my models. So methods that combine individual models to come to their final prediction are called committees. They, they consist of a committee of individual uh, predictors. So a particular way of uh, obtaining these committees is simply by averaging over a set of models, right? So I can just train a bunch of models uh, independent from each other, and then once they're trained, I can combine them. Uh, but there's also more clever ways of obtaining these models, and that's via boosting. This will be covered in one of the upcoming videos. So uh, we can form our committee in a clever way where uh, we try to add a new member to a committee, so a new machine learning model, a new classifier, for example, which is based on the previous model. So uh, suppose I know that the other committee members, the other model models fail in particular settings, then maybe the new committee member should focus on improving on that. And that, that's, that's one of the ideas behind boosting, and we'll cover that in, in the next video. So boosting relies on the idea of training multiple models in sequence, right? So the next model is going to be based on the performance of the, the previous uh, model. Okay, and then it turns out that forming your committee of models in such a sequential way uh, can lead really to huge improvements over uh, working with just individual models. Okay, so that already covers some ideas for forming uh, these committees uh, of models, right? Uh, so once we have such a committee, we can make a prediction by maybe just averaging the response of all my uh, predictions. But we can also look at this slightly differently, like an alternative to, the, to this is model selections. So we have this committee of, of models, and then for each prediction, we can maybe decide to select just one model to make the prediction. And this particular one model is then supposed to be the expert, right? The, 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 the predictive model that is supposed to do the best job on the particular input uh, that is presented to it. Right, so in such a model selection approach, we can decide to select a model uh, based on the input. So we have a, a selection mechanism which uh, checks the input and then selects the corresponding uh, model. 
And a famous example of such methods is a decision tree. So that's going to be covered in, in this lecture and one of the upcoming videos. And the idea is that um, we have a selection of process of, of selecting my final uh, expert to make the uh, prediction uh, based on a sequence of binary selections. Now I suppose this, this represents my decision tree and I'm going to present it with a particular input sample. And then here we have some selection criterion that says, oh, based on my uh, input X, um, I pass it on to this branch. So if, for example, X1 is higher than some threshold, then I move it on to this branch. And then here we have another selection criteria, uh, basically another um, middle person or like a sort of semi-expert that is smart enough to, to sort of guide the, the selection process in the right way. And then it says, okay, yeah, based on X2, it's higher than this value. So maybe I pass it on to this particular expert. And so you, you pass on these decisions to a final expert so this would be the final expert that then decides okay um, well now that I see this feature um, I say this is the corresponding output or I say, uh, output or I say this is the corresponding output so in that sense you can work with highly specialized experts uh, because uh, a lot of information is already filtered out in this selection process and this particular uh, classifier then only has to focus on one particular feature for example to make a very basic decision that allows it to discriminate this point eventually into uh, one of the two categories for example. So these decision trees have, they have this very clear selection mechanism where uh, information is passed on from one expert to the other until the final expert makes uh, the final decision. So it's, it's fun to think of these uh, methods as really as a committee of experts that collaborate to come to a final decision. But you can also think of mixtures of experts in a soft selection manner, right? So that my final prediction, so what is the probability for my target T given my X is based maybe on uh, a soft combination of particular predictive models. So this is one predictive method, uh, predictive model conditioned on an expert number, right? So I have K of such uh, expert uh, predictive methods. And then whenever a new input X is presented, um, this pi of K then assigns the appropriate probability for K being the appropriate expert to make this decision. Okay, and this then looks very similar to uh, the Gaussian mixture model, right, that we uh, encountered before, where uh, this pi of k is a mixing coefficient, which depends on x, so it really decides how much to put a particular predictive model into this mix of uh, predictions, and this is then, uh, this represents then one of the experts. So we can think of model selections in, in various ways, right? So in the first example, we uh, work with decision trees where my final experts are selected via this very nice uh, process of very simple binary uh, decision rules. Or we could do it in a soft manner that we have all these prediction, predictive experts uh, which are selected based on a weighted average, essentially. And now what I want to do next is focus on the difference between uh, Bayesian model averaging in comparison to model combination methods in general. Uh, basically, I started off this video by saying that, uh, well, Bayesian model averaging is a form of model combination methods, but this is not entirely true. Uh, so I have to rectify that by explaining the main difference. And the main difference is going to be that by, with Bayesian model averaging, we are essentially set out to recover the model that is uh, responsible for generating my particular data set uh, of interest. Whereas in uh, model combination uh, methods, we typically think of my data set being generated maybe via several processes and my predictions are made by several predictive systems as opposed to the single one that is eventually going to dominate this uh, Bayesian model averaging. So the idea is as follows. So we're going to focus on this difference between Bayesian model averaging and, and uh, model combination methods in general. And now we already, so we're going to take the following example. We have already seen a model combination method for density estimation, namely Gaussian mixture models, right? So we're now considering this probabilistic viewpoint. Uh, so in this context, we use several Gaussians to uh, produce this density P of X via marginalization over some latent variable Z. And the idea was that this latent variable set indicates which component of the mixture is responsible for generating the data point X. Right, so that works as follows, right? So we have this joint probability. So we say that each, uh, to each X, we have an associated uh, latent variable set and we can factorize it in the following way. And then my uh, P of X is obtained by marginalizing over these uh, latent variables. So this discrete set of latent variable uh, values that set can take on. So we marginalize over set x given set. So this is my probability 
of x given my latent variable z and then times the probability of uh, z. Okay, so that tells me that my probability for x is, is, is given by a mixture of these, uh, let's say, expert distributions that know how to generate x um, well, for each uh, latent variable type. Where each of these experts, where each of these uh, components has its own uh, Gaussian distribution, right? So with each latent variable value z, we have a different uh, Gaussian distribution. Um, okay, so then the setting is, right, that we have these joint probabilities for an observation x and its latent variable given by the following factorization. So we have the latent variable, conditional distributions, and we have a prior or a probability for the latent variable uh, in itself. And then the density over an observed x is simply obtained by this marginalization process, right? So we marginalize uh, out of a set. So we're not interested in which of these uh, distribution was responsible for generating this uh, particular probability. So we're just going to marginalize out a set and that gives me the marginal distribution for just x alone. Okay, and then suppose we have this data set of all these observations uh, stored in this big matrix X, then we can compute the probability of making, of observing this actual uh, data set, right? So we can assume IID, namely that each data point is uh, independent from one another, but they are drawn from the same uh, Gaussian mixture model in the end. So that's what you see over here. And then you can make this factorization, right? So the probability of of observing this entire data set given my model is given by the product of all these individual uh, probabilities. Okay, so and then these individual probabilities were obtained via a marginalization over um, the joint probabilities of my uh, data variable Xn with its corresponding uh, latent variable. And this can no longer be reduced. We cannot just get an expression for my uh, data set at once, but we see that my full probability factorizes into this product, to this product of all these individual probabilities that all have their own latent variables uh, set n. So that's really a big observation. So each observed data point xn has its own latent variable set n. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to compare this against uh, what it looks like for Bayesian model averaging. So uh, we're considering Bayesian model averaging and we're going to consider that we have different models which are indexed with some uh, uh, variable h. So I have capital H of such different models. And I'm going to take this at a relatively abstract level, right? So one model could be uh, like a fully trained model using, uh, let's say, polynomial basis functions. And another model could be uh, based on Gaussian basis functions. And yet another one with just 10 basis functions, another one with, with 1,000. So each of these choices gives me a different model. But maybe we could also think of this uh, like one edge is one set of parameters for the same model. So we can approach this from different levels of abstractions. But the idea is we have all these uh, probability distributions uh, given by a particular choice for model H, and then we have these prior probabilities uh, P of H. Then in this uh, Bayesian model averaging approach, I'm just going to uh, say that my final distribution is given by this, this essentially this weighted average of all my uh, probability distributions, right? So I marginalize out this uh, model choice. And the idea of this Bayesian model averaging is that in the end, we're going to assume that just a single model is responsible for explaining my entire data set. And it's just that we're uncertain of uh, which model is the actual model that does this. And this uncertainty is reflected uh, in this probability distribution uh, over my models. So that's how you should think of this. We have uncertainty of what model is actually explaining my data. So, and then in this, a Bayesian setting, we can also look at the posterior distribution for uh, the probability for uh, picking a particular model given my data. And we saw that if we add more and more data, then these posterior distributions become sharper and sharper, more focused on one particular model. Okay, so that's the idea in this Bayesian model averaging. We start out with uncertainty over which model is actually correct, but then if we start observing more and more data points, I can really zoom in on what would be the appropriate model. So this distribution, this posterior distribution for age, given my data x becomes sharper and sharper, and we focus on one particular model, which is going to explain uh, my entire data set. And this then explains the main difference between a Bayesian model averaging versus uh, model combination methods in general where in Bayesian model averaging, we say the entire data set is generated by a single model. We're just unsure about which one it was. Whereas in general, in model combination methods, uh, we can combine different models and think of it that my data points are possibly generated by, uh, well, a mixture of different models.
And that was exemplified in this Gaussian mixture model, right? So suppose you have uh, two data points, a point X and a point X prime, then it can be that they can, that they're actually generated by different latent variable models, right? So this can arise from a, a latent variable set and this from a corresponding latent variable uh, set prime. So these axes, these observations can indeed come from completely different models. And this is something that you will never see in a, a Bayesian setting.